Hi, my name is Maura. I'm one of the developers of EasyFino. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use EasyPhino to create synthetic phenotypes. You can find all the information I'm going to give you also on our documentation at easyphino.readthedocs.io. For our simulations, we use an additive model in EasyPhino. That means that the phenotype Y is given as the sum of some causal markers X with big effect sizes beta, some background marker Z with smaller effect sizes gamma, and some random noise epsilon. For the noise, you can either use a Gaussian distribution or if you want to have skewed phenotypes, a gamma distribution. You can also adjust the number of samples you want to create and the number of markers that will be used for the causal markers or the background. Additionally, you can adjust the heritability. That means the amount of variates that can be explained by the polygenic background and the effect size of the causal markers. So let's have a look on how to run the simulations on one of our Ubuntu machines. I'm again using the same Docker container we already showed you in another tutorial. So if you're not familiar with the Docker workflow, I'd recommend to have a look at the other tutorial videos. Now all you need to create your own synthetic phenotypes is a genotype matrix. That means we need sample IDs, SNP IDs and of course the genotype data. You should use the same data file format as for the normal EasyPhino workflow. For this video I'm going to use again our tutorial data. So now all we have to type is the following. Python 3 minus m easy fino dot simulate dot run synthetic phenotypes. Then we have to specify our data directory, so data dir. That means we need to give the path to our genotype matrix. And then we have to specify the name of our genotype matrix. So genotype matrix, which is in my case called x underscore matrix dot h5. So now what's happening here is it's creating a folder called x matrix within our data folder and a folder called simconfix. Then it creates our simulation and stores it with the sim id1 and here it gives us all the configurations that we're used to, so in this case, case the default configurations. And it also creates a simulations overview file. So let's suppose we want to create a simulation with a heritability of 50%. and with a gamma distributed noise. So distribution gamma. Then it tells us here our configurations again, this time with a heritability of 50 and the gamma distribution. And the sim ID of this simulation is now two. Now let's assume we want to change the number of causal markers. So number causal markers or number causal snips in this case. Let's change it to 3 and use an explained variance of 20%. And let's say we want to create 10 simulations with this configuration. So number of simulations is 10. Now 
Now you can see again here our specifications. And the sum ID in this case is 3 minus 12, since we created 10 simulations. Of course, there are also another thing, uh, a lot of other things that you can change and adjust. For this, all you have to do is type help in here and you get all the options. So let's do that. Yeah, here you can see all the options, all the things that you can change when creating the synthetic phenotypes. So now let's have a look at the simulations that we just created. So let's move to our data folder. And here you can now see this folder called X matrix that we just created. So let's move there. And within this folder, we have CSV files for all our simulations, a simulations overview file and the sim configs folder. So let's first have a look at the simulations overview file. What you can see here is in the first column the name or the ID of the simulation and then some other stuff like the seed that was used to generate it or here the heritability which we changed for the second one to 50%. You can also see the number of causal markers that we used which is three in the case of those 10 simulations here and uh, the explained variance which we changed to 20 here. In the last column, you can see the distribution for the noise, which we changed for the second simulation to a gamma distribution. So let's have a look at the simulations file then. What you can see here in the first line is the name of the simulation. In this case, SIM3, SIM4, and so on until SIM12, since we created 10 simulations, where the number always gives you the SIM ID. And then we also have a shifted version of each phenotype, which is just the same phenotype values, but shifted to get rid of negative values. Then here in the first column, you always have the sample IDs, which are the same as for the genotype matrix that you use. And then, of course, for each phenotype, just the phenotype values. Now you can use those files just as any other phenotype file in our easy phenom workflow. So now let's have a look at the simconfigs folder. In here are some additional information stored, like the background snips, the features of the background and simulation configs. So let's first check out the background snips. Those are just the snip IDs of all the markers that were used to simulate the background. And in the beta's background file, we have the corresponding effect sizes, so the beta values. Now let's finally have a look at our simulation config files. Those look very similar to our overview file from before, but now we have here the SNP IDs of our causal markers that we used and the corresponding effect sizes. And you can use this information, for example, to analyze feature importance of different models. And that's how you create synthetic phenotypes based on genotypes using EasyPhenom. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our other tutorial videos.